giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to the fun. fun. Let's get to the top five. We've got our number five ranked team, team number 597, Numhot. So this was in my initial pool and was actually one of the first ones I judged. And I knew the game was on once these guys brought out this legit shooter claw that was mounted on an elevator. The biggest concern that I'm sure all the other judges agree with me on is what the hell is the center of gravity of this thing? This thing is going to be so high up in the air when it goes for like 80% of the robot is like up when it's elevating. So I think that if this robot didn't go for ball knocking and stuck mostly to uh, grabbing balls off the ground and catching them, that would be better. I just made the comments on the last uh, time I spoke about the importance of a puncher actually having a smooth path with which to punch the ball and not having it bobble between some flywheels. This is a perfect puncher in the way that it has the tusks on the bottom and then it has the intake wheels on top are on a pneumatic cylinder so they can pivot away and allow for a clean path. So I think this was a very well done claw. And besides the center of gravity concerns, um, I think this is a pretty solid architecture. I, re I really enjoyed the design of the shooter uh, in, in some. I think the shooter has one of the few compelling cases where you can say, yes, this will definitively work. And the modularity, again, with being able to change the spring rate, as well as with the um, release, with the uh, shifting, um, make it a really effective shooter. Um, I really enjoy the red red tint on the renders as well. Uh, it reminds me of some of these screenshots that I used to chat with. Up next, we've got our rank number four team, team number 496, the Wired Boars. This was a really cool robot that reminded me of 1323 when I first saw it. Um, so it's got a swerve drive and an intake on both sides of the drivetrain, as well as a claw that sticks up top to grab the ball. Um, so the intake is pretty weak. I think it's got, you know, single wall or um, just one by one tubing, pretty weak, um, especially in the rigors of this game. It does have an asymmetric four bar pulling it in, which I said I'm pretty weak to, for, but, um, and a buddy climb as well. So something unique also about this robot was that it had two hooks to hook onto both climbing bars for stability with the buddy. And that was a really clever way to, um, I thought that was a really clever way to keep it stable. I thought the claw for grabbing the ball off the truss would have a hard time getting it just because of the length of those pivots. Um, they are made out of carbon fiber, but you know that's not a magic material. It doesn't automatically fix all of your design issues if you just say it's made out of carbon fiber. Yeah, I really like the claw on the forklift. Besides the issues that Julia just pointed out, I really like how it grabs the balls and when it lowers back down, it lowers right above the area where they would intake from the side so that it's you don't have to have more moving components than you need it uses the same shooter for that as it does when it intakes from the ground on the sides. One thing I wish that this robot had was some way of catching balls thrown in by human players. Um, maybe they could close the claw at the perfect time and lower it into the shooter, but with no ability to open up, you're going to be doing a standard type of drop the ball on the floor and intake it. Um, but the detail was really here on this robot. I mean, just look at those battery straps. Uh, it was great. With that, we'll enter our top three. In rank number three, we've got team number 438, Cheesy Oofs. Yeah, so this robot was really great. Um, there was obviously a super high amount of attention to detail. And um, although there were some clearances that did need to be checked in CAD, especially with the gas springs, as well as the claw intersecting the front um, two by one. Um, with the game strategy, I think this overall makes a lot of sense. Just a fast, low cycler that's able to demolish opponents and isn't able to be pinned. Um, that's a real uh, winner for, for this game. Um, the climber, again, is extremely effective, as well as the buddy climb. Um, the only thing to add for the climber is I would like to see some analysis for the climber hooks as the material is a little thin in some regions. Um, 
Uh, furthermore, there's some potential for weight savings just by um, designing a few plates a little differently. This was one of my prob probably my favorite claw implementation, having the two completely separate um, sides of the claw hooked, um, not hooked together at all, made it really flexible for doing all sorts of different things. Um, and I really like the buddy climb. It's, this is the only type we saw like this, but um, I think it was implemented really well. And you can, like we were talking about this, that you can really tell this was 254 even without seeing the number on it, so. Yeah, I one thought, thing I, go ahead. I thought on the drivetrain, the layout of the wheels was very interesting, how it had the center ones on the outside and the corners inside the frame. Uh, I can't remember exactly why they opted for that, but it's a very interesting design. And I think that would only, that would be more of a complication than a benefit. You would definitely have to run your chains inside your tubes uh, to make that uh, effective. Yeah. Next up. Oh. I was just going to add um, one thing I thought was interesting. So the drive gear boxes have a PTO for the climber. So it's one of the only robots in the competition with a six Falcon drive, um, which definitely means that they could probably push through opponents uh, if they needed to. And I think that the octagonal bumpers, you know, 971 did that in 2014 and it proved pretty effective. And I was actually surprised more teams um, that were looking at 971 didn't borrow that drivetrain architecture too. Next up, we've got our number two ranked team, team number 379, Mimitar. I don't even know where to start on this. It's <laughs> This is a very complicated robot with extremely high creativity that I think all the judges appreciated. There's a claw that, a le like a left right roller claw that is on a wrist that can elevate up to grab the ball off the truss. And then that can come down and hand it into a front, a top bottom 180 degree inverting uh, roller claw. And I just think that that was a, a really creative way to maintain a, a legitimate shooter while also being able to do the ball off the truss, um, which is, you know, potentially great for cycle times. I do think that the claw could be made lighter. Um, it probably could be made out of polycarbonate. The detail, though, is, like, off the hook. There's, like, the decals are on the backs of the belts. It's, um, there's just really a lot going on here. I noticed with this robot, since I've been commenting a lot on people's sword drive designs, that I really like this one, how it kept the motors protected more inside the module instead of having them poking out the top or having them like flipped and on the edges. I think that'll be very robust and that'll keep those motors out of the out of any danger. All right. That Wraps up our talk about rank number two. So without further ado, let's pull up our rank number one team, team number 631, PDX. Okay, so this this row was at the very end of my judging pool. And oh my gosh, I was just like really shocked when I saw this. It's a, oh man. Okay, so it's a reverse double four bar but instead of using motors or something else to rotate the linkages, it instead has a very low down gearbox that drives a long lever arm that drives a compression member that raises up the uh, four bar. And then also it uses entirely linkages to control and invert d instead of using meshing gear teeth. Um, so as far as the climber itself went, I was extremely pleased with the detail, the choice of the rods and the connections at the ends. My biggest issue with this was all in the intake. And I really think that this robot could actually work if the intake was made significantly simpler and lighter. 
the large intake to really hold multiple sides of the ball um, is just far too heavy to work on this type of reverse double four bar. It's going to be swaying a lot when it elevates up. Um, and I think that'll really, really hurt this robot. But with regards to incredible detail, incredible creativity, um, and just overall, like, very solid on all the other fronts, this was a, a good robot. So I think since this is rank number one, I get to nitpick it a little bit more than I do the others. Uh, one thing I did notice that is a fairly minor detail but could have consequences is that some of these gears in this design were pocketed a little bit too much. So, um, there are some areas where I could see the gears easily breaking, especially because it looks like they are aluminum gears and then they're pocketed. They might be steel gears, but they look in this design like they're made of aluminum. I'll echo a lot of what Torrance said. This is a really creative design. When I opened this up the other night to do another judging round on it, it took me probably like just 15 minutes of panning around and looking at it before I really understood what was going on in all the parts of it. Um, again, the double reverse four bar is an, just an inherently wobbly mechanism. The geometry of it does not lend itself to stability up high. And so having the heavy intake on top of it is not a great idea. Um, it was really cleverly done though with the um, asymmetric at the top to adjust the intake um, angle a little bit. Another thing I wanna point out is the pistons used to rotate the intake pretty small. I don't think they would be able to rotate the intake at all. Yeah, I just definitely really love this robot. I love the creativity. I love the attention to detail. Um, all the screws are modeled. Everything that you could ask for in this robot is just there. Um, one thing I want to note, right, is the inclusion of Swerve with this design, it adds to the design. It doesn't take anything away, but it perfectly supplements everything together. And I think that's what makes it a really effective combination in addition to the creative linkages. We didn't even mention, but there's a choo-choo driven catapult on here, by the way, which was, you know, first kind of popularized uh, in 2014, but works very well. Um, one of my issues, I think, was on the ratchet strap in the way that that was kind of tensioned. Uh, and I also thought that it would be very tricky for them to carry all the pneumatic tubing lines um, through their entire reverse double four bar to that intake and all the motors at the end. That's just a lot of wires to zip tie on the sides of pivot joints. Um, I think it could work, but I, I would have liked to see, you know, maybe uh, uh, that being modeled in to show their solution to that. Definitely. All right, Tyler finish up our last giveaway yeah congratulations once again the 631 we didn't um something we didn't mention that our top three teams are also getting uh rewards from west coast products as well too so thanks again the west coast products for that and we'll be giving our final giveaway from them which is uh, a couple uh safety glasses that are branded with west coast products so we'll be doing two separate giveaways for this uh first one is going to be uh recons united we'll take the first one congratulations on that and the second one is going to be Connor McBride taking uh, that one. Uh, lots of redeem notes for all that as well, too. And thanks a bunch to West Coast Products uh, for supplying all these amazing giveaways. Once again, please make sure you shoot me information as soon as possible so we can get, get that over the West Coast Products so they can ship it out to you as soon as possible. A couple last things just to mention real quick on my end. So we have a couple shout outs on stream. Uh, so we'll announce those right now, uh, redeemed with the uh, fun bucks. So uh, we have uh, Poofy Jacket 254 says, GG, GG, everyone. Good luck in the school year, BT dubs. Uh, a crazy chipmunk uh, says, Dirtman should have been ranked higher. We, we checked, he's not. Uh, and then <laughs> rounding it up, uh, Anthony3175 says, Dirtman is the GOAT Catathon robot. And it was robbed of its rightful place as the Catathon champion. So, I mean, judges, I don't know how you feel about that. Clearly, they're attacking you. Uh, but, <laughs> Dirtman, uh, congrats on whatever place you have that has now been long forgotten. So, but congrats to all these teams here. And big, big, uh, big thanks to F4 uh, for uh, doing an amazing job. And, Nick, great job to you as the host, man. Yep. Uh, congrats again to Team 631 for winning the F4 Summer Catathon, and thank you to everybody that's been watching. Um, 
This is another massive turnaround, and we can't wait to be back again in the winter for another one. Thanks to all our judges for their time and dedication. Getting those robots judged uh, is a lot of work, um, and they put in a lot of time into that. Uh, don't forget that if you want to watch more FIRST Robotics in your life, uh, hit that follow and subscribe button for fun on both Twitch and YouTube. On behalf of myself and the F4 Catathon Planning Committee, I'd like to thank all the teams for your amazing Catathon creations. I personally had a great time looking through them and seeing all the amazing stuff that you've done. Uh, thanks to everybody uh, in this Catathon and in previous Catathons who's viewed and supported um, the Catathon, and thanks to Fun and our producer Tyler for your continued support and promotion of the stream. Uh, we'll see you this winter for another Catathon right here with more content from First Update now talk to you then <laughs> <laughs>